Hey, what's up, Candy Ken? What's up, Baby J? How's it going? Not today. With Candy Ken and Baby J. It's Candy Ken. Candy Ken! Candy Ken! Welcome to the Candy Ken Show. Man, I'm I'm super excited. Me too, bro. Yeah, but you're probably the biggest guy <laughs> ever seen across of me. I love that. Yeah. I love that. I'm honored. Well, thanks for having me, Of man. course. Yeah, appreciate it. When Troy, Troy told me that he had come to my podcast uh-huh. from doing yours. And he was like, yeah, but I got to Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, <laughs> that was three and a half hours. I love that, dude. And I had to stop him because he would just, he would not stop. Yeah. And then he went and went on the na- next podcast. I uh-huh. mean, this guy, the certified health nut is an absolute nut. He's a machine. He's a machine. He's yeah. a podcast machine. Yeah. He's yeah. a nut for sure. Yeah. No, but he said, man, I got to hook you up with Candy Ken. He's massive. He's awesome. I think you guys would have a great convo. So here we are, dude. That's right. Yeah. Um, you know, when he he told me about you and I started checking out all your stuff, I was really blown away, dude. Because, you know, you got the psychedelic tripped out <laughs> fur room, right? <laughs> yes. You have a super interesting persona. That you've created, yeah. you know, and I can tell I'm like, you've done your posts where it's me 1% of the time and yeah. it's all crazy and yeah. colorful and flamboyant and interesting. And then you 99% of the time working your ass off, getting a hardcore workout in, being a family man, being a dad. And I thought to myself, this is a really interesting dude right here. And I love that, yeah. you know, because it's not, you can't re- like... As much as anybody would want to box you in, you're very anchored, like you're very grounded in in something true, in your manhood, in your power, and you're not afraid to be fucking wild, you know? And I think that's a really unique thing in this day and age where everybody's creating a brand around something that's super buttoned up and it's clean and it's like you know this idea of who they want everybody to think they are but like you it seems to me like you just said i'm just gonna be me i'm gonna express it to the fullest and let everybody just take it as it is and i love that i respect that big time yeah i'm I'm still trying to figure out if it's i don't know i always saw social media as like a video game Mm, uh-huh. And I never, like when you open a video game and you go for the characters, uh-huh. <laughs> like it, it's you, but it's also not you. Right. I don't yeah. know if that makes sense, but totally. like it's, it's like, it's more like instead of picking the, the, maybe the, the, the board, like we're so versatile mm-hmm. as a human, yeah. right? There's so many personalities, like the one of your parents, the one at school, yeah. the fighter, the husband, the athlete. Yeah. Um, and then there's this one, which I named Candy Ken, which is just the over the top insanity. Like, yeah. <laughs> and that I chose for the internet because that is like my wild, like where I, I don't even try to be me. I try to have fun. Mm. Mm. It's not my me. It's like my, I'm going to pick the funnest character that I possibly could. That is just so crazy. Uh-huh. You know, and that yeah. is like my outlet. Like, yeah. I'm not even trying to show that I'm a good dad or that I'm a good athlete. I, in the beginning, was just like, I'm going to troll as hard as much as I can and have fun with it, you know? Like, yeah. I think people take themselves way too serious. Yeah. It's and good. they try to be them so, like, authentic mm-hmm. that it becomes, like, unauthentic because you're trying trying oh, too hard. Yeah, totally, dude. Yeah. Totally. And we can smell that a mile away. You know, we can smell that inauthenticity when it's disingenuous, when it's somebody who's putting on a thing. This doesn't even come across like that, weirdly, because like you said, you're just, you're looking at it as a fun, insane expression of yourself, this character that lives inside of you and just putting that out. And it's real. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it lives in everyone. Uh Just not everybody lets it out. I think we all have uh, our unicorn or whatever you want to call it Uh that lives and it's just waiting you know where did that come from for you did you grow up with this 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 persona this being somewhere inside of you did it like when you were a kid so when i go back i i've always been into 
I'm like a Leo and I always mm. like to, Okay. I always dressed up. My whole childhood oh. was just a dress up. I would just not dress up on Halloween. I would dress up every day I could. We had a, we had a box with costumes uh -huh. and I would just like, that would be my favorite thing because it's just that. fun to play characters. Yeah. And then when I went to school, I stopped doing all of that mm. because I, I never wanted to be, I was not strong enough to be an outsider and kids are cruel. So I, I, I blended in. And I was just, I thought that was my new me. Mm. And I was just like everybody else. And then one day I was in Berlin, I was studying photography. And one day I just, I was like, I can't do it anymore. I can't pretend anymore. I can't be this person and I'm going to do the opposite. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, it started with like, as a man, what are you like? What, what color can you not wear? So I would be like, okay, pink. I will choose the most opposite of what you're supposed to do and do that and see what happens. Kind of, it's like almost like a self experiment. So uh -huh. it really led me to Hello Kitty and princess stuff and and camouflage and 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 this background. And it's like the most annoying, most saturated kind of shit that I could find, like glitter, uh -huh. slime. I don't know, you name it. Like yeah. whatever is like not considered like manly, I would be like, that's my flex. Like I'm such a man uh -huh. that even this room can't take that away. And it doesn't take that away from you either. Like yeah. there's a big difference between like uh, lipstick and high heels that is like an actual fragility mm. uh, aspect mm. than, yes. than a color. Like I always thought like pink was fucking great. Oh, like, yeah, me too. I always wore pink shirts. It's funny you say that. Like when I was a teenager. Yeah, because it's not about... The shirt I wore to church was like a pink Easter egg yeah. looking shirt. Polo or something like that, you know? Yeah. it's. I agree with you on that. And I always thought they... Like there's like a fine line between... You know, like... It's not that you have to dress up as a woman and then still be a man. It's more that like some things are just, they take it too far. Like that, like rainbows are gay and mm. that like pink is for girls. Like mm. there's like, there's some sort of like where I was like, I always, and, and, and now I have like a full on crisis again because it started with the clothes, but now I feel like maybe like, I don't want to be a part of the propaganda Right. Where, where I've listened, yeah. you know, where like they tell women to be more masculine and uh -huh. more independent. Maybe they've been telling me to be more in touch with my feminine side. Uh -huh. But like you said, like, even though I did all of this camouflage, uh, fruity stuff, I never lost touch with the man in me or the father in me. And yeah. like, like you said, like 99%, I would always just work hard, work hard on myself on my physique, on my mental health yeah. and in creating a family and being as healthy as possible. But then I would just have an outlet of creativity online. And I never really, I never thought who it was for or, or, or if it's uh, like, it was just an expression, uh -huh. never like a, about sexuality or, yeah. or like, who am I? Or, or yeah. it was just a, I'm going to have fun. Uh -huh. If that makes sense. Makes total sense. And that's a really interesting thing you said, not wanting to be part of the part of the propaganda. Yeah, because you always have to ask yourself, yes. where do your ideas come from? Like, why do I used to have this need to be like, fuck you. I'm right. going to wear a dress. I'm right. going to wear pink because I'm like, I'm not part of you guys. Uh. But then later on, you're like, am I like now like uh, a part of something else? Like you always uh. got to reflect and self reflect and like yes. rearrange why do I have to dress like this or do I don't like, what am I doing? Uh huh. You know? Well, all of this stuff in society, these interesting it's memes, it. yeah. these, um, there we go. These interesting memes and these ideologies that get spread and it becomes this thing of virtue signaling. Like you have to say this, why aren't you speaking out on that? We need to be sensitive to this and all of that stuff. We live in a society where people are not anchored into anything real inside of themselves, i.e. connected to God, connected to spirit, source, a higher power, have cleared out all of their, their traumas, their wounds healed on the inside, which allows them this opportunity to be anchored into something true inside. 
And so all of this stuff just becomes this, this false expression to experience or make meaning out of their life. But when you're anchored on the inside, you're anchored into something true, you're anchored into something that is you and authentic. And then you're putting on the costume as an expression of play, as an experiment, as art. It's different. You know what I mean? Like it's a different thing. And that shines through with all of this stuff. So it's like, it doesn't matter what you're wearing on the outside. You look like a warrior. So the warrior comes through and it's like the warrior can wear whatever the fuck the warrior wants to wear. Like there's no questioning the warrior. It's like, that's the costume that's showing up today. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And we live in this world where people haven't gone inside to clear out all the gunk and all the hurt and all the fuck you and all the rage. So everything we're doing is just this expression to be seen, to be heard, to be loved, this shouting out, hey, look at me, you know, rather than being locked in, being anchored inside, and then allowing this to be an expression of your art form on the outside. There's a distinction that is important in that realm, especially in this world we live in, because, you know, we've wanted to kill God. We've wanted to get God out of the school, get God out of the mainframe of, of the American mind, get it out of all anything that we could possibly think of. God is bad. Religion is bad. All of this stuff. And focus on things that are have no real substance whatsoever, that are completely illusions about what's real or what's not real. And... <clears throat> You know, so all of these things, they become this righteous expression of demanding to be seen and heard rather than an expression of art form. And there's a big thing that happens there where the disingenuous founding of that expression is revealed. You know, you see like, oh, that person actually has no idea who they are or what they are. They're not grounded in anything. They don't even have their feet on the ground. This is just a play thing. This is just an experiment for them to, to scream out for attention, right? You know? Um, and then you get you get lost in the, in the sauce because once you start identifying with the person that you've created online, which oh, I yeah. always, like, like you said, like, this is an expression and I always know me is me you can mm -hmm. meet me we're meeting you meet me right now yeah. online that is not me uh, that is just like you said an expression uh -huh. and people get it so twisted they live this person online and it, it, right. it, i've met so many people that it is heartbreaking because then you need to keep that persona yes. up you, and you identify with what other people think about you and you literally you're a slave of your own persona uh -huh. <laughs> where you like I've dated girls that hate that person that they've created right. and they they're, they they developed and they're not that person anymore. Mm -hmm. But the the your viewers want that person, mm -hmm. so they have to keep up something they're not, yep. and it drives you crazy. It makes you so sick. It is. That's a rough road to be on. That's really rough. Yeah, yeah. That's why for me, man, it's been like you were mentioning, you're going through another transformation now, which I'd be interested to hear about or another like evolution of yourself. I feel like my life has just become this constant evolution of letting go of any idea of who I think I am or yes. what I think it's got to be about or what I have to even focus my time and my energy on and just being true to what's emerging in this moment. Like what's happening here, right here, right now, you know, and when I can do that, I free myself from the possibility of that happening. That thing of, oh shit, well, I said this and I have done this. So now I have to, I have to be held. I have to hold myself to that standard or that idea. Or what if I don't do the thing that supports what I did yesterday, then people will think I'm a fraud or they won't buy in or whatever it might be. And just letting go of that and recognizing like, man, this thing in here is alive. Whatever this, this energy inside of me, this current, it's alive and it's constantly moving. 
And my job is to allow it to move, allow it to move and grow and expand. And whatever that looks like today, that's what I'm going to do. You know, that's who I'm going to be. You know, I'm not getting locked in on, well, I'm Eb and I'm a yoga teacher. It's like, because then the moment something comes across or some opportunity or some new interest comes around, my my focus, my perception is closed in because I'm just a yoga teacher and I can only do these things that a yoga teacher does. And I have to be focused on my yoga teaching. And I can't really entertain that idea, even though that looks really interesting and like something I want to be a part of. Can't really entertain that because I'm a yoga teacher. It's like, fuck that, dude. Or like when I was started the podcast seven years ago, or when I came out of the NFL, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a master in the letting go of the identities because I've had to be at a necessity coming out of pro football, man, that's an easy one to hold on to for the rest of your life. I'm, I see guys all the time who are doing it, you know, getting pissed off that they're not inducted into the ring of honor. They're not inducted into the hall of fame. It's like, man, we already gave everything we had to this game. Now you're going to let them take everything else because you're not getting recognized for what you once were. You're not even that anymore. That was a part of your life. That was a small window. You were a young man. You've got your whole life ahead of you. Now what? Who are you now? Yes, we'll always be a warrior, but you have some other gift to give to the world other than just playing football on Sundays or Saturdays, you know? And so for me, coming out of football is like, there had to be that metaphorical killing of the football player Ebb and letting go of that, shedding that skin so that I could do something else. Then I came into cannabis. I became a, a, a very staunch advocate for cannabis as medicine for football players. I did that for about eight months to a year, longer actually, but eight months to a year super, super passionate about it. I'm still passionate about cannabis as medicine, no doubt about it. It's a tremendous remedy. It's an alternative to opiates as well as healing brain trauma and all sorts of good things like that. But there was a moment where I was going, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm a, can I'm a cannabis advocate now. I'm going to talk about cannabis as medicine for athletes, right? And then all of a sudden I was like, yeah, but this isn't it either. Like this is a, this is a tool in the tool belt that we should know about. We should understand, but this isn't the, the grand opus of my entire life. This isn't what I'm destined to be just a cannabis advocate talking about cannabis as medicine for football players, like being the guy who once played football, who's now talking about cannabis. That's not it. And I became, then I got the podcast going, started doing the podcast. Okay, now, yeah, I'm a podcaster, man. <laughs> I'm a podcaster, bro. <laughs> you know, and then same thing over and over again. Like anytime I find myself latching on to an idea about who I am or what I'm supposed to be doing, it's almost like my spirit just gets, it's like I'm in a straight jacket and it's like, I can't, I can't, I got to be free just to be me. Whatever that is, you know, and like you said, me, Ebb, this being moving through this life, this is a super complex organism, dude. It's dynamic. There's a lot of stuff inside. There's all sorts of aspects and ideals and all sorts of things going on in here that I can't really explain. Now, my values, like what I value, what's important in my life, my priority in my life, that's unchanging. That's something that I've really anchored into about what my life is about. It's about health, peace, joy, love, anchored into that. So whatever I'm doing is going to facilitate creating grander and grander planes of that life mode. You know, and of course there's hard times, there's difficulties, there's challenges, there's things that aren't joyous. There's a, there's pain still, but it's like the, the ground of my being, the floor of my being is moving towards more peace, more love, more stability, more strength, more resilience, more courage. 
so that I can be the son of God that I was born to be, essentially. If that makes sense. No, I couldn't agree more. I think uh, I've like stopped telling people, or even myself, mostly myself, I guess, who I am. Mm, and I just yeah. let myself find it every day. Mm. I always tell people I have no idea who I am. I, they're like, are you a rapper? Are you a TikToker? When I even hear the social media shit, I'm like, Jesus, like... I hate when people introduce me as a TikTok star or uh, I was almost embarrassed when I was I was at the, my first jiu-jitsu class uh -huh. and uh, and they announced me as like today we have like a celebrity here like <laughs> you know a TikTok famous uh -huh. blah 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 I was felt almost embarrassed uh -huh. because but then I asked myself what do I want to be announced as uh -huh. and then I found out there is no there is nothing Uh -huh. Because as soon as you name something, you already limit your potential. Yeah. No matter if it's artist or philanthropist or entrepreneur, uh -huh. everything has a limit, yeah. a, a potential limit where you're like, this is not it. Yes. Artist is not it. Uh huh. You know? Uh, yeah. Person of God is great, but I even am, that. <laughs> even that. I I am everything and nothing. Uh -huh. and I get to experience myself every fucking day and I need to choose to be good every fucking day I think about this every day when I, I see those buses of like fucking prisoners go, mm. getting gondled through LA mm. I'm like they chose the devil mm. for one moment yeah. and look where they are now yes. and I don't think they're demonic or mm -hmm. I think they learned they might be good people they might be dads Totally. They, they might have a future, a wife, kids, mm. but they chose. Yeah. But do they identify with that moment? Mm. Do you identify like, or do you identify with your best moments that you had in your life? I think you should, everybody needs to give themselves a fucking chance mm. and just be present in the now. Yeah. Experience yourself, experience mm. how great you can be. Every time I, I suffer or I'm in a, tremendous pain i get to find out what i'm made out yeah. of and who i am really am and i always find out i am better i'm more than i thought i'm i can overcome moments that i never thought i could overcome and i have there's beauty in nothing and life is so precious and like i think we all need to let go and surrender to just being And finding yourself on yeah. a daily basis, almost mm. like how you said, you do one thing. Now I'm a TikToker. Now I'm a podcaster. <laughs> now I'm a, now I'm a father, right? <laughs> But actually, you're you're everything and nothing and nothing. Yeah, exactly, dude. You have no fucking idea yeah. what you're capable of. Totally, bro. And It's every totally time true. I also meet like a celebrity, I'm like, they're not it. Yeah. Yeah. You're just like me. Yeah, totally, dude. Right? Yeah. We're, what you did, I can, if I put myself oh. to that, I can do that. So so that means you're the greatest. You, you can be you can be whoever you want to be and you don't need to put people on pedestals and yourself down because mm. I think that's what most people do. Yeah. And you should really find out on a daily basis. I tell that to everybody, like find out who you are mm. every day. Love that, man. Yeah. So right on. So right on. That's an interesting thing about celebrity, for sure. I did, I started this podcast with Mike Tyson called Hot Boxing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, we would have all sorts of people come in. Snoop and LL Cool J and Tony Robbins and Jimmy Kimmel. And, you know, there's this interesting thing that happens when those people come into a room it's like there's a there's a consciousness around their celebrity but then you sit down with them and you realize they're just a human yeah. who's gone on this whole life journey and in most cases just kind of like stumbled and moved and fell into the thing that they're doing You know, like it wasn't like they woke up and they were Snoop Dogg, who I love. I mean, Snoop was one of my favorites. Super grounded, very real guy. 
and they just found something that they loved and worked hard at it. That's, we can all do that. And my, my experience, like growing up as a little kid watching pro athletes and actors and celebrities, they always occurred to me as an example of what was possible. It was never like that person's better than us. It was always, oh, I see what I can do. I could do that. I could do any of that. You know, and it comes down to that thing, just like you said. Give yourself a chance, dude. Give yourself a chance. And it's interesting, we live in this time where we've constantly got a screen with somebody on it who's good looking, in great shape, seemingly stratospherically successful on a yacht in Italy, wherever, in Ibiza, like wherever, right? And that, that comparison thing wants to start happening. And you start thinking to yourself, man, I'm not doing so well. <laughs> you know, I'm living in a, just a regular house or an apartment. I got a Nissan and, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, it's, uh, it's a good day when I get food on the table. So you think to yourself, oh, I'm not good or I'm not good enough, or I don't have what it takes. And all, like you said, all of that's bullshit, man. It's like, you are everything. You can do anything you ever fucking dreamed of. Literally. Just focus your attention on it. What do you want? First of all, get clear on what you want. Most people got no fucking idea what you want. And I will say, your point is true. Usually we have no idea what we want. However, you can envision something. There's a version of yourself. It's the highest, greatest version of yourself. When you close your eyes and you think about and you envision the highest, greatest version of yourself in joy, surrounded by love, totally in your purpose, completely content, all the money, all the material possessions you could have ever dreamed of, even though we know that stuff doesn't bring happiness, see yourself in all of that stuff. That version of you is possible always. And it starts here and now today, like this moment right here, right now, you can start doing the thing that's going to get you to that, that version of you, which is here already. It's here already. You just have to realize it. It's on us to realize it. Like how many times in our lives, dude, somebody's like, man, you're fucking great. You did a great job on that thing. You, you're fucking incredible shape, bro. Look at you, man. And somewhere in you, there's that voice. It's like, really? Really? I'm, I'm that great? It's like, why do we need somebody else to tell us that, dude? I've made it a practice of mine. I've been praying and meditating for too long, it doesn't matter, enough to know that it's totally changed my life. And my prayer at night before bed, I close my eyes and I just come into conversation with God. And this voice is always there. And it's, it's just like, I go, God says, yes, my son. I'm like, how am I doing today? He goes, how do you think you're doing? Like, I think I'm doing pretty fucking good, man. So like, you're doing a great job. You're my beloved son. What else can I say? You're a gift to this world. It, w that's there always, you know? You can have that conversation with God, dude. You're here. We're here. We're blessed with life. That is the most unconditionally loving action God could have possibly taken was to bring you into form to do his work, whether it's God's work, whether it's spirit, the universe, whether you don't believe in God, whatever it is, whatever you want to do, you're here and you've got an opportunity like this next moment, the next meal, the next conversation, the next workout, the next glass of water. It's all right here to start being the, the version of yourself you were destined to be. And every, every one of us, you've got this unique blueprint Unique DNA, unique gifts, unique strengths. Put them to use, you know, put them to use. Just start doing it. 
There's nothing, there's nothing stopping you but you. That's it. You know, give yourself a chance. And you said a fucking totally profound thing, man, about those guys, those prisoners on the bus going to jail because of one moment with the devil they chose for one moment. That's always there, dude. The devil is a lie, man. The devil is a lie. It's always there in your ear. Hey, man, you could just do this. You could fuck them over, steal that thing, do that, you know. Whatever it is, it's always there tempting you, dude. Or that you're not good enough. You're not good enough, man. Yeah. You know, all of that shit, that's always going to be there somewhere. You'll work your ass off. You'll, you'll elevate yourself to heights you never even thought possible. And you'll be alone cleaning your kitchen one night before going to bed. And all of a sudden, that voice will come in. Super quiet, that voice comes in. What are you doing, man? Who do you think you are? <laughs> and so then, what are you going to do? That's that moment, dude, like you said. You're going to find out what the fuck you're made of. You're going to find out. How, how well trained am I? How well prepared am I to face the devil this time? It's like in the Bible. When Jesus is baptized, he, gets, he raises out of the water. The voice of God booms down and says, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. And then right from that moment, spirit takes Jesus into the wilderness to be tested by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. He's just tested by the devil. From that moment of being recognized by God as his beloved son, you go right to your, the hardest challenge of your entire life. And he's prepared. He weathers the storm. He tells the devil to fuck off. You've got no place here in my life. I'm the son of God. I don't have to prove anything to you. That's what it is. We think we got to prove something to somebody. We got to prove how good we are. It's like, dude, you just keep showing up. Put your nose to the grindstone. Focus on something that you love that lights you up. And maybe it'll be for a year. Maybe it'll be for 10 years. Maybe it'll be for your entire life. And having that fluidity, that ability to let go, pull the ripcord when necessary, and or stay on target. Those are powerful things. That takes discipline. That takes discipline every day waking up, being disciplined about your mindset. What are the words you're using? What's the language you're using when you communicate with yourself or the outside world? What are those words like? Are they positive and uplifting? Are they beating you down, negative, pulling you into that black hole of despair, of doubt, whatever it is? You got to take time, get clear, get still. Take time in quiet and stillness, man. That's when all the divine insights, wisdom, truths reveal themselves. Breathe deep, move your body, exercise, keep this vehicle strong and fucking resilient, dude. You only got one in this life. You know, we haven't gotten there yet, thank God, where they can just take our consciousness and put it into another body as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know. Maybe they, they're already doing that. <laughs> but like, we've got one body, man. Keep it strong. Keep it healthy. Connect with people. Be loving. Be a positive force in your community, in your family, with your friends. Lift people up. Tell them how great they're doing. You know, we all know those people. We all know how cutting and hard it can be to hear when somebody's just being an asshole or shitting on you or criticizing you for something that's, that's invalid, you know? And you know that feeling when somebody says, hey, man, you're doing a great job. Pew. You feel lifted up. You feel inspired. You feel like you can go on another moment. And for me, that always comes in that moment where I'm like, what am I doing here, man? Is it time? Do I, am I just out of my mind? Should I start over? Should I do something else? And then that, those words come in. Ed, that thing was amazing that you did. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. I know what the fuck I'm doing. I know who I am. I got this shit. He gives you one more, a little more courage, a little more energy. Just get over that hump. And then you're into a new plane. You're climbing a new mountain. Anyway, this is where we're at, man. You know, this is what people, there's too many people 
living in doubt, too many people giving too much credence to that devil, you know, to that voice, that naysayer. We've all been put through the shitter, man, to, to some extent. You know, we've all been through hard times. No one is, escapes the adversity of life. No one escapes it. If, you, if you're fucking born into a family of billionaires, that's maybe even more difficult. Well, that might be the worst of... It might be the worst possible <laughs> incarnation you could think of because you're just born into utter comfort. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. You never have to tap into the fucking animal, the fire, the instincts, the courage, the strength that it takes to be a successful human being, you know? So we all have our difficulties, man. And it's just giving yourself a chance. I love that, dude. Giving yourself a chance, taking it one day at a time, letting yourself be free to express and be the the being that you were born to be. No, and surrender is key. And yeah, surrender is a key. I got the hat, University of Surrender. Bro, that's so funny because when when I did, I really thought, you know, sometimes I think I'm I'm the man, you know. I I I got all these followers, right? I consider myself like rich and famous. I go to this jujitsu gym and I see like twenty men, <laughs> real men, right? <laughs> Uh -huh. real fucking man where nobody gives a fuck about your income uh -huh. your status uh -huh. all this shit doesn't matter on the mats right yeah and I was like but that fired me up even more because uh -huh. I don't want to be called TikToker anymore I have this calling right now that like I want to really surround myself with, with warrior mm. the softer this world gets mm the more people worry about their Uber Eats and their pronouns, the more I feel like I need to make a fire and hunt my own. Yeah. Meat. It's beautiful how, because like it's on the one side, it's this world is so dark and the devil is everywhere. Everything we eat is toxic. Everything online um, on Netflix and, and uh, the media is completely toxic and everything is just made to make you a soft peasant <laughs> that bows down and takes another booster in the bubble, uh -huh. right? So uh, everything, right? Even the doctors are like, don't, don't do it. Don't take vitamins. Don't go in the sun. Just it's crazy. You know, dude. just live isolated and like be as depressed as possible, so mm -hmm. we can pump you up with as much pharmaceuticals as we possibly can. So I have this side where I'm like, oh my god, this this is the pure evil that I'm born totally. into. But then I meet Troy, and what he says is just the the pendulum swings and the yin and yang is so present mm, mm -hmm. with everything evil comes something godly yes. in this world and with every every bad thing there's another angel and like it's just so beautiful what how there's so much light in the darkness oh yeah and when i look at the what happened the last like three years that there have been such a force of of good mm. and such a like i am forced now to think about what i eat what yeah. i do how i raise my kid mm -hmm. that it's there's so much beauty in that there's so much beauty in 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 getting to know the devil or seeing him uh -huh. i think the it's just really bad when you're when you don't see when you're so when you're blind you're blind and you just you're the cattle when yeah. you're just the cattle swiping away with your life and you're playing your life in like uh what is it like third person or uh -huh. you just watch yourself go yeah. through life i mean that's i think once you open your eyes yeah that then you can make the steps necessarily and and there is always light mm -hmm. oh yeah and the I, devil speaks to me every day. Oh, yeah. Dude. Every day. Man. Oh, yeah, totally. A thousand percent, bro. Yeah. Me too. It's a constant It's a constant beating back the devil, just being like, get the fuck out of here, man. And the taller you stand and the more courage you confront the devil with, he doesn't want that fight. The devil's not interested in a fight, dude. He wants you weak and to just succumb to his darkness the ease the the pleasure the sin all of that stuff 
That's just all the devil cares about. If you stand up and say, go fuck yourself, get out of here. You've got no place in my life. I know exactly who I am. I know what I'm doing here. This is righteous. What I'm choosing to spend my time on and my day on, how I choose to think and live and breathe and act, you have no place here, dude. Devil doesn't want that. He runs. No, and you, you go from I'm not good enough to I am the I'm gonna be the best ever. Uh -huh. yeah. It goes from I don't I'm like standing in front of my cold plunger. I'm like, nah, no, 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 <laughs> just just go inside. Just just go inside. <laughs> nobody <laughs> saw you yet. Like nobody knows that you're out here. Like just one day, like it's not gonna hurt you. Like don't do it. Don't do it. Don't uh -huh. do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And then my finger goes to the to the timer. Uh huh. And I can feel the resistance uh. pushing me. You could like really see the devil pushing me back. Uh. If I just get 10 more seconds of something, like I get my towel and I pretend to do something that is like not necessary. Yeah. But the closer and the, the proudness when I, I push that timer, that relief when that timer starts, where I'm like, I I am the one. Yes. I am God's son. Yes. I'm gonna I defeated it once again. Uh -huh. I am in here suffering and yes. you didn't get me. Exactly. Not today. <laughs> and I do it, you know, when I don't feel good, when I'm whatever it is, whatever excuse I have that day, I push it out and I still get it done and it feels the 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 you come out so glorious. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, because that that's another rep. You know, that's another rep overcoming adversity. It's a small, it seems insignificant because in our own conditioning or our own life experience, it just seems like, oh yeah, well, everybody has these thoughts and it's just me. It's just me in there. But when you really look at it as the negative, dark side of the psyche, the devil, your demons, your conditioning, all of that stuff. And there's this other part of you that's utterly great, pure, invincible, strong, courageous. And you look at these two aspects of self, you know, those times when you come into contact with the dark and with the devil, that's just like, dude, it's fine. Take the day off, bro. Go hit the couch, man. Just watch Netflix, you know, order a pizza good enjoy that and you overcome that and you don't do it also that's that's the moment where you should do the thing you should say yeah actually i'm definitely jumping in the ice tub i'm definitely getting my workout in i'm definitely getting out of bed this morning when the alarm went off at 5 a.m because i said i was going to hit the gym by 5 30 and I'm not fucking taking this thing off. I'm not negotiating with myself, as Kobe would say. There's a great clip of Kobe Bryant. He's talking about not never negotiate. negotiate with yourself. Wow. Like you set that alarm for 5 a.m. When the alarm goes off at 5 a.m., you spring out of bed and you do what you're going to do. You don't sit there, lie in bed, hit snooze. Uh, just like 15 minutes, man. It's cool. There's another great meme of like... Every time you hit snooze, a weaker version of yourself yeah. emerges. 100%. Totally, dude. You just have to jump out of bed. I said I was going to do it. Let me go do it. I'm going to get this thing done. I'm going to stick to my word. Because when you don't do that, you're chiseling away at your willpower. You know? You're chiseling away at this, this pillar that... It starts off totally full and content and strong, but little by little, we whittle it down until it's just this weak, porous little thing that anything can get through, you know, because then it's like, you know, COVID happens and we're all just supposed to wear masks and get injected and do what big daddy government says and big pharma and do what they want us to do. It's like bullshit, dude. Yeah, if you've spent your whole life just negotiating with yourself and being and taking the easy way out, yeah, sure, that probably was the route for you. But were you able to fucking stand tall and say, no, you know what? That doesn't feel right for me, man. Like nothing about this feels good to me. So I'm not going to do that. Thanks, though. That was a fucking really hard line to draw three years ago. 
wasn't it? Now everybody just wants it to be like, oh, <laughs> so funny, right? We had to have vaccine cards to get into restaurants here in L.A. That was cute. That just went out the window overnight. and Nobody wanted to say anything about it. Like how many fucking lives that destroyed and how many families that fucking destroyed. You know, no politicians have been held accountable for that yet, yet. But it's all about this thing, man. Too much comfort. You get too comfortable. It starts off, you're hitting snooze. And then the next thing you know, you're enslaved by a society that's just told you who you are and what you're supposed to be doing. But like every fucking moment, man, matters. Every single moment, every action, every word that you think. Every thought in your mind, it all matters. What are you giving attention to? What are you nourishing? Are you nourishing the devil, the easy way out, the weakness inside of you? Or are you feeding the strength? Are you feeding the lion? Are you fucking feeding the warrior? You're nourishing the warrior. Every day, make that choice. You have to. Whether we want, whether we know it or not, our survival still depends on us doing that. We've been tricked into thinking it's all comfort and easy and good, man. It's all good. It's all good. You don't have to do anything, Ken. You don't have to do anything. That's bullshit. That's what they want you to think. That's an illusion. Now it's even more important because it's all psychological now. It used to be all physical. We had to go out, hunt, kill the prey, bring it back to the tribe, protect the land. It was all physical which in a way is easier because the threat is eminent. It's right here in front of us. When it's psychological warfare, it's invisible. The threat, the enemy, it's invisible. It is almost yourself. It is yourself. Your mind. It totally is, is your yourself. Threat. So your it's mind like is your enemy. So it's even more crucial then. It's even more crucial now. To be more strong, than ever. more yeah. than it's ever been, yeah. like you said, and all of this gets revealed through the insanity that we've seen. Like God bless the internet, man. God bless social media, because nothing can escape. It's a container of consciousness. It's all consciousness, and nothing can escape. You know, if the internet wasn't around. God knows if we ever would have found out about Epstein and all the fucking, you know, these these like sick people. Sick, evil people doing this shit. Maybe we would have never known without the internet, without social media, you know? God knows you cannot, you cannot trust a thing the media says. The mainstream media news, it's like, it's all propaganda. It's hilarious. It's like 1984, literally. They spin stories just to spin narratives, to make you think a certain way, to get you out in the streets and pissed off about something else that has zero effect on your life. Or maybe it has all the effect on your life and they're telling you to look over there. You can't look at any of that stuff. So it's like every day, it's about what are you doing in here, man? What choices are you making inside? Are you confronting the devil? Are you overcoming adversity? The little adversities become the macro adversities. And you have to choose that every single day, whether you like it or not, dude. Because it's like, yeah, we don't have to go kill the buffalo anymore, but we still have to be strong and live with courage and be have integrity with our word, with what we're speaking and saying into the world. Because that's where the fight is now. It's like, can you be courageous and strong in your words, speaking your truth in the face of someone who's telling you you're wrong or, you know, you're racist or whatever it might be. You're a bigot or a scumbag, whatever it is, because you're not following some societal ideology. <laughs> well, well, very well said. And yeah, I like the whole Like back in, I that also makes me wonder like how much they got away with, mm. and that also uh -huh. makes me question everything I learned in school and everything that is uh, the history of mankind. Mm. Yeah, totally. And nothing makes sense anymore. The the pyramids, I mean, all the the ancient 
everything, n- nothing makes sense anymore. No. They, they, like everything, the Roman Empire, I mean, you name it. Uh, everything is just, uh, now you really, and it all comes back to who am I? How's yes. my physical, my, yes. my inner circle, my family, my health. And like you said, it goes from, from micro to macro and on my daily choices on on how I'm going to treat myself and, and my surroundings. Yeah. And it really makes you really makes you wonder. But I, I feel the same. That's why I started the podcast. That's why I love talking to people. Yeah. And we've just gone so far from, I don't, I can't, uh, in LA, that's why I'm also like, gotta leave LA is because I don't even have conversations anymore. Uh I don't talk to people. I only, it's only online bullshit about whatever, (laughs) you know, like you said, like you post this flag or that flag and and this and the Ukraine and whatever it is, but you actually don't have any conversation with anyone. You're like in your little circles, in your little bubbles. Mm Mm-hmm. That's yeah. why podcasting is so great because you yeah. can finally have a conversation again with somebody. We've gone so far from being human. Yeah, yeah. Like that's what I my crisis at the moment is like. I wanna, I wanna be like a man. Like uh-huh. I wanna. I don't wanna be the cattle anymore. Yeah. Do you know that they call it feed because they're feeding the cattle? It's just a one big feeding mm. of your time into uh-huh. this device. Yeah. I want to like sit around a fire with with real men, and I want to uh, fight, and I want to hunt, and I want to just be in nature and see my my son grow up, uh-huh. and do like really primal shit because this yeah. modern life makes me want to do it. Uh-huh. It really inflames that primal instinct in me. Like I want to eat organs, yeah, and, and I want to sit on a fire and not look in a blue screen anymore. Like I this feel is you, man. this is all fucking disgusting. And especially when you, when the, this is your living and you're a social media mm. person, yeah. It, like and then when I tell people that are not social media influencers, they they don't see the danger. Or like when I tell yeah. a family member, like you should really. Don't worry about this shit and like get off your device as much as possible. They're like, no, like they love it. And yeah. like, it, it's, it's crazy. What does it hurt, man? What does it hurt? I'm just looking at fun pictures and there's a lot of information. It's like, okay, yeah, that's good. And this thing's wrecking your brain, wrecking how your brain functions. So something I've been, uh, I spent a lot of time training the in this practice of open focus and open focus is something that was researched and written a ton about by this guy les femi who ran this biofeedback clinic at uh princeton and um but Before I even knew who Les Femi was, about a year and a half, two years ago, I started my meditation practice evolved into this listening meditation. So I would just, my meditation is close my eyes, I set a timer, start breathing in my nose, out my nose, just letting everything relax, get heavy, get into my seat. And I bring my attention to the sound that's coming into my ears. And most specifically in that, I'm focusing on the point where the vibrations of sound make contact with my eardrums, okay? And what I'm, the the exercise is to bring my attention to both ears at the same time. And what you find, what I have found, is that immediately every sound that comes into your ears, your mind wants to label it and identify it. It's like, oh, air conditioner, car outside, birds chirping, dog, dog shuffling, somebody closed a door. And little by little, you just let that go. You let go of that identifying and you keep coming back to this point, this middle point that is this open focus point that is your two eardrums and the sounds just coming in. So you become, it's, it's as if you bathe yourself in the atmosphere of sound that you're in. And it's a, incredibly profound experience. And what it does is that it harmonizes the two hemispheres of your brain. And so Les Femi talks about this a lot. He's written a ton of books about it. 
and something that he's illuminated is is in modern life we are constantly in narrow focus we're in chronic narrow focus our focus is narrowed in on our phone scrolling our feed answering emails texting somebody thinking about what to eat making food all of this stuff it's very narrow focus oriented so you think about the difference between narrow focus and open focus illustrated in a way that's super easy to understand. Narrow focus is the lion looking at the herd of of gazelle and it locks in on the injured gazelle and its brow furrows, adrenaline starts pumping. It's going to go fucking attack and hunt and kill that gazelle and eat it. Open focus is the lion chilling under the tree, just very calmly gazing out at the savanna, seeing the whole expanse of earth out in front of it. And so open focus is this very restorative mode. Okay. So think like parasympathetic nervous system, rest, digest, detoxify, reproduce, open focus. That's this, that's the bullet train to the parasympathetic narrow focus. There's always an element of stress. Now, narrow focus is also necessary. We want to do stuff. We want to have a podcast. We want to create content. We want to accomplish our dreams. We want to build the kingdom. All of that stuff. Narrow focus is important. However, when we're in it constantly, like we are, it becomes super detrimental. We get burned out. Adrenal fatigue. Your brain stops functioning properly. Uh, Your hormones get out of whack. Your endocrine system, your nervous system, everything goes to hell. When you're in this constant state of narrow focus, anxiety, depression, all of these things, ADD, ADHD, your mind doesn't know what to focus on anymore. Like how many people, numbers of ADD and ADHD have just skyrocketed over the last few decades. It's like, what's going on, guys? You know, like your mind, literally, there's so much stuff happening. Your mind doesn't even know what to put its attention to. So this open focus training is fucking profound because all of a sudden you're taken from looking at life through this tiny fucking pinhole, dude. You're looking at it through this little pinhole. And then all of a sudden when you open the focus, it's like, oh my God, look at what's here, man. It's going back to that thing. It's like when you're totally identified with a persona, you're in here. And then all of a sudden you realize you're this incredible human being that's so sensitive and powerful and all being. That's open focus. Like the possibilities are immense. There's limitless opportunities. The world is an ocean. It's not just a one lane highway headed straight to the horizon. Um, I don't know why I started talking about that, something you said, but this open focus practice, this idea of getting out of this this pinhole of life experience and broadening the scope of your perspective, it's a really powerful thing. And when you start doing this, this was my point, you start doing this and all of this, all the technology starts to be almost distasteful, like you were saying, like All of a sudden, you're like, man, I need to be outside. I need to be in the sun. I need to be running barefoot through a forest somewhere, like chasing a boar, you know? (laughs) like It's all I want. Like, I need a fucking fire with my beloved people around me. Like, that's what I desire. That's what my heart is calling out for. But we can't even really entertain that idea. That sounds crazy to somebody who hasn't seen that, who hasn't experienced that distaste of going, you know what? I actually feel like shit after 10 minutes of scrolling through Instagram. I actually feel like shit. I feel like a bad person now, you know, until you've experienced that and that feeling has anchored into your bones of like, I need to do something different. I need, there's a better way to live here. I don't, I, maybe I don't know what it is yet, but I know, but I know it's not that right. And that's one of our gifts, dude. You know, it's like one of your gifts of having spent a decade or more, probably more time than that, creating content and immersed in this 
internet fucking, you know, content sphere. It's like, that's a gift that you've been given of seeing what this thing is. And then you can go, you know what? Actually, it's an incredible tool. It's an incredible tool, just like a hammer. Hammer's a great tool. You can use social media. You can use the internet. You can use all this technology to do amazing things, to wake people up, to turn people on. And then you know what? We can fucking put it down, walk outside, go start a fire, go hunt, you know, get out in the world, get out in nature like we were born to be. But until, dude, this is a big issue, man. This is a big fucking issue in that, that spans every walk of life, as far as I can tell. Until you've hit rock bottom, until you've hit the wall of the way I've been living my life is not, is no longer sustainable until you've experienced that people could tell you until the cows come home, like, Hey man, like that's not good for you. Or maybe you should do something else. You're going to go, dude, I'm fine, bro. It's fine. Fuck it, man. What do you mean? I love eating pizza and jacking off to porn and, you know, you know, spending my days wasting away. I love it, dude. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm making money. I'm doing good. Until that person hits the wall with whatever happens, you know, like whatever happens. For me, it was like none of the escape valves were working anymore. I was going to kill myself or I was going to get clean. Like that's where I was at. And so it was like, I found my way into Al-Anon, 12-step programs for families of alcoholics. I didn't have a drinking disease. I had a thinking disease. Like I had, I had painted myself into a corner with how I was living and I had to start doing it differently. And I was brought to my knees praying to God, God, just give me something, man. Show me the way. And my family said, eh, 12-step programs, man, Al-Anon, families of alcoholics. We come from a family that's deeply affected by the disease of alcoholism and that had made its way that had infiltrated every fucking corner of my life. Like all the stuff that I used to fucking close my eyes, to escape, to do anything I could, but just feel the discomfort of my life, of my being, of where I was at. It wasn't working anymore. I had to look in the mirror. I had to change. You know, and until you experience that, it doesn't matter, dude. You can lead a horse to water. Can't make him drink, you know? And so for anybody out there, it's like, all right, well, you know, we're in a really interesting time, dude, where you, you can't ignore what, what is going on. Like you see it right here, you know, like the government, pharmaceutical companies, entertainment, all of this stuff, it's like, you can't ignore it. You can only ignore it for so long. You know, you can only say it's not real or it's fine or whatever it is for so long. And then one day it's going to just explode out of you. It's just going to erupt out of you. You're not going to be able to take it. You're going to lose your mind. You're going to be completely brought to your knees, surrendered to the reality of life, your life. Would you agree with that? Because for me, it's like, I see a lot of people walking around saying like, I'm doing the work, I'm doing this, I'm X, Y, and Z, I've, I've got it all figured out. And it's like, well, actually, you haven't taken total accountability for yourself yet. You haven't taken radical accountability for yourself, who you are, and what your life is. And until you've done that, i.e., for me, it was hitting rock bottom. You know, do you, do you think everybody needs it's so weird because everybody I talked to on the podcast that has completely radicalized their life, they've all hit a rock bottom, hit a rock bottom. totally same, bro. Same. I mean, that's what I think. I mean, one of my great mentors of my entire life, he said to me, I asked him once, I said, you know, does everybody, ha I asked him this question, like, do we, do we have to hit a rock bottom? And he said, well, it's like in life, we can evolve through pain or through insight. 
And he said to me, it seems like in this day and age, we need pain to change. Like we need to experience deep pain and suffering to actually make a change. And that was my experience. And I, it, it appears to me like everyone I know who's fucking living eyes wide open, awake, because that's what it is, right? It's also like if you're still a person going around at any moment in any situation saying they fucked me, you're pointing the fingers, you know, you're the victim. If you're the victim in any part of your life, you have yet to take radical accountability for yourself because once you've done that, you recognize that it's all on you, bro. You know, it's like us. It's like, I'm craving the hunt. I'm craving nature. I'm craving the fire. I'm at a place in my life where if I'm not now taking steps to realize that in my life, there's nobody else to blame. Like that's on me now because that's what I want. I can't say, oh, well, it's them. You know, they're not letting me do that. You know? So you've realized, you've taken that step through the God portal and you're like, oh, this, this life is mine to live. And anything, any grievance I have about it is on me to adjust and to change and to make it different if that's what I want. And if, if you're still living in a place where you're thinking like, oh, it's the government, I can't do it because of them, or I can't do it because of this, or can't do it because of that person, or my ex-wife, or them over there, you're still in a state of victimhood. You're, well, you're, you're, you're a boy. Yeah, you're a little boy, exactly. You're a little boy. You haven't that, stepped into I manhood. when I was a little teenager. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. We got a lot of, we got a lot of little children walking around in grown bodies. Yes. You know, which is an interesting thing, isn't it? That's dude, it's, but it's what you said is like that's as a man, everything in your life is your fault. Totally. You bro. have to take absolute accountability for absolute. everything. Yes. Your wife is just a representative of you. Your children are a representative of you. Your job, your income, your health, your physique, yep. everything is your fault. Yes, dude. Yes. 100%. That's what being a man is. And once there's no more men, a society is easy to control. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and once yeah. there's no more men, it's, they say it's the end of a civilization, really. I think, uh -huh. you know, I, I have a lot of hope, like you said, man. Part of me, part of me, dude, can be like, oh, God, it's so dark. It's so dark and fucking, how did we get here? And then another part of me is like, man, there's a lot of dudes waking up, man. Bro, more than ever. This more is than ever. the best time ever. I, I like, agree. Give me, give me another pandemic. <laughs> Bring it on. I want to see. Yeah. I want to see what happens this totally, time. bro. You want to do this one more time? Yeah. Because it's not going to go. Not going to go how, you, no. how it went last time. Bro, this time... Especially in I Texas. Agree. Oh, yeah, oh bro. bro, you come to Texas. Bro, I've seen the men there. Uh -huh. I've seen the communities there. Yeah. They don't fuck they don't with fuck the around. rest. They yeah. don't fuck around. No, no. They are... It's true. They are firm, but they're kind. Uh -huh. They're nice. Yes. They're generous. Yes. They're welcoming. Yes. But they don't fuck around. No, no. bullshit. No. So... And that's the... To me, that's the... That's the but characteristics that, of a man. But the, the softer everybody gets, doesn't that make you stronger? Oh, yeah, bro. Oh, yeah. I say it all the time. The I'm more like, technology, the more s sticks on fire and like <laughs> organs and like... No, <laughs> totally, like, bro. It's the, that, but that's the beauty. That's the light I in agree. the darkness. This is like where I'm like, I'm so thankful for everything that has happened to me. Right? You need totally that rock agree. bottom. You need all that pain. Only that makes me like all these like sloppy little cattles make me like, I want to be the baddest motherfucker walking on yeah. this planet. I want to be as fit and as healthy as I could possibly be. Bro, be a fucking lion, man. You know? Fuck. Just be a fucking lion, bro. Like, that's who we are. We're, uh, 
we're the fucking we evolved as the the strongest species on the planet for a reason let's not fuck that up now you know like we, it's all on us again it's all on us so my question to you would be and this is it it had to be this way for me like we said you know that thing of of taking accountability that's really what is what separates the men from the boys and for me that only became clear when i hit rock bottom when the night was darkest and it was like oh okay all right brother <laughs> okay god i got it it's on me i can't can't be looking around waiting for somebody to save me do it for me nobody's going to do it for me you know and so that that has come through the pain and i think you said it already like for when you're speaking to a society of people who maybe they hear this conversation they're like yeah i'm like that yeah I've taken accountability for myself and then they go around the corner and something happens and they're like that motherfucker over there he did this to me or whatever it might be you know and realize in a moment oh I'm still a victim to they hit circumstance the yeah they hit the snooze right <laughs> I like that one <laughs> they hit the snooze you know to me it's in how do you trigger, how do you trigger that? You know, for me, it was in God's timing. There was a lot of God involved in that. Maybe it's because I was living in a super hard way. You mean you're talking about the rock bottom? Yes. Like, how do you trigger a rock bottom? I think they're... Because I think a lot of people, you're doing it like, you're just cruising, man. You know, like, you're not doing it enough to like totally fuck your life up you're doing it just enough to cruise you know so you never dip below into that real dark hell in your life so you never really get brought to your knees you know so it's like what are the ways that we can if you're not gonna if you you if because dude like some people I think it, it's it's going back to the being born into the family of billionaires or being born into a family where maybe it's just a really healthy, like easygoing family, you know? It's like middle class, if that even exists anymore. It's like middle class people who are just good people who, you know, there's no trauma, there's no abuse, there's no would, drug addiction, you know, so you're just kind of like cruising, but you never, you never hit the bottom. But I would say in a family that's, that's good and healthy, there's an active element of discipline in there, like keeping your body strong, like the fire of keeping your physique healthy and strong, keeping your mind healthy and strong. Like these are disciplines that I feel a healthy, good life necessitates. Like if you're going to live a good, healthy life, it necessitates discipline that you're living with discipline, like with your food, with your movement, with your mental practices, right? It's impossible. You can't be lazy and you're not going to sit on the couch and eat pizza and watch porn and jack off and it's going to be a good, healthy life, right? That's, a, that's an impossibility based on physics, based on natural laws of the universe, of consciousness. It's just impossible. Wouldn't you say? Well, obviously, but like, what if, what if you never wake up and you entertain uh -huh. yourself you uh -huh. get distracted till right. to your deathbed till you you're not and then it's over or it's a quit myocarditis and call it a day you know uh-huh but then also i i i come from that i would consider myself middle class perfect childhood hmm. perfect parents still together 
had everything I ever wanted, uh -huh. Austrian passport, rich, uh -huh. not like Lamborghini rich, but rich yeah. enough, rich yeah. that I like could never have, worried about money. got a fucking iPhone when I was of age and uh -huh. went to every school I wanted to and got the education and the healthcare and everything. Yeah. Never, never suffered a day uh -huh. in my life. I think the beauty is, because I've met a lot of people that like, like Troy, who like had like, they had such crazy health problems. They almost, they became like a guru. You were in so much pain. You, you, the devil has taken you so much. You become the angel out of that, yeah. out of that pain. He became, now I'm going to help everybody kind of, yes. right? So for me, I don't know if I've ever read, hit rock bottom. I would, but also is it, it's always as bad as you kind of create it. Like uh -huh. not everybody needs to be chased like on gunpoint to be like, all right. Or like on like, like on a very like, this is, I'm going to kill myself or I'm going to make some changes. Uh -huh. Like I've had people on the podcast where it's like, they like, it's like death or, or the right choices. Right. Now, right. Right. But then everybody, I mean, the darkness is as big as you kind of create it. Uh -huh. So you can suffer every day, even though there's not real yeah. danger to your life uh -huh. in your mind. Yeah. The pain is as big as you kind of create it. Uh -huh. That's true. So it's, it's hard to tell. Well, then what was it for you? Was it just an it instinct was... to do no, challenging it... things or? Well, first of all, I want to get back to like, who am I? Uh-huh. I would say I'm that I was always for, I always wanted to bring fairness and, and, and good things to other people. Uh, uh -huh. And I'm always that guy that would like get back up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I'm like, I'm not a rapper or a podcaster or the outlet doesn't matter, but I am that fearless yes. guy that always gets back up. I got that dog. I feel it. Uh -huh. I, I thrive on it. I get it. Yeah. Um, that's what I would describe myself like I, I, what I want to be known as. Uh -huh. Fearless. Yeah. And somebody that like tries to bring good in the world. Uh -huh. That d does not bring any more toxicity to this world. And it doesn't matter how much influence I have, but the, the influence I do have, I choose God. I choose good. Mm -hmm. I try to push the devil on myself and on other people away as mm. much as I possibly can. Yeah. On the other hand, the rock bottom question, I mean, it, it really fascinates me because like, I'm like, w w what does need to happen for people to wake up? Are they, but, or is what's happening in the world? Is that the, the waking up uh, all the shit that goes down in uh -huh. the media and, and even on a, on a physical level with the pandemic, like, is that the wake up call? Is that That's what, a good what's happening? Point. That's a good point. And when I, when uh -huh. I look back on my life, I would also say like just becoming a father. Yes. Becoming a father is a massive that initiation. Really, that was not my rock bottom, but my wake up. Yeah. Where it's like, hey. This is real. Like, this it's is, not about you. Yes. You need to think like, like what you said about the, I had to focus on me, like that narrow uh -huh. focus. And then once you have a child, it opens. Yes. Big time. Big time. Yeah. Naturally. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of problems and a lot of obstacles that we're facing these days is created from people that don't have children. Uh, and that's a major push on society to wait with having kids and women doing career and men being women and being soft. Right. Is that you won't have that realization. Yeah. You won't have that moment of truth. You need, then you need rock bottom if you don't have a children, child, you know? Yeah, it's interesting, man. And I can only speak for myself, but for me, even once I have a child, then it doesn't matter anymore if I fight with my wife or, or like these little things or, or, or Israel, Palestine or Ukraine. It, it goes very narrow down to what is my child eating? Where is he right now? And what do I need to do to provide and protect my family? Yes. It goes really. It's simple. You're, it gets very simple. Life yeah. becomes so simple and you're uh -huh. not, you don't, it's not that you don't care, uh -huh. but, but you're not confused by this. Like I'm going to post something and that's going to help. So yeah. you're not distracted as much. Yes. You become very clear. Thousand Your percent. focus opens. Like how you said, uh -huh. you don't see life 
through uh, my career, my Lamborghini, my house. I need right. to make more money. I'm a millionaire. To I need to protect and provide and be the healthiest me so I can be around my children as long as possible. Yeah. yeah. And we need that. No, you're totally right, dude. You're totally right. That's dead that, on That board. happens naturally. Uh-huh. Because I wouldn't say I've ever hit rock bottom, really. Hmm. It's interesting. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Because that dark. expands my understanding, yeah. too. That everybody who needs to hit rock bottom is hardcore. It is hardcore. <laughs> it's, like, it's hardcore, Holy bro. shit. I know. I mean, hey, dude. I, I'm just looking around going, man, like, what does it take, dude? What does it take for you to be accountable? Yeah. You know? I mean, I totally agree. Having my daughter, I mean, I can't even believe my daughter's going to be 12. Holy shit. It's crazy, dude. 12? She's going to be 12. She's in sixth grade. It happens like that, dude. It's in a blink. <laughs> Comes out of the womb. It's like, wow. That's a whole fucking mind-blowing experience. That would make you also was, believe in God, no? Oh, watching a birth. You're like, that's, if you that is God, God that's then all God that's, happening uh, right there. I mean, the miracle of life. It's dude. I mean, we take that for granted, bro. We take it for granted. Like what a fucking miracle, you know, a man and a woman come together, plant this seed in this womb <laughs> and then a life grows. I mean, I remember watching, I, she must have been four weeks old, uh, eight weeks old, so tiny, just on the floor, like crawling, not quite crawling, but just like in that totally helpless stage, you know, and it, it was this crystal clear illumination of, man. Every single person you come into contact with starts out like that, totally helpless and innocent and pure. And the road that we all go on to get to where we are when we come into contact with each other, it's, it's baffling. And that, I remember that moment so clearly. I was still playing in the NFL. I mean, I was like 24 years old, you know. And I thought, man, you can't judge anybody, man. Can't judge anybody by the book, by the cover of the book, you know, by what you see in front of you. You can't really make a judgment about who somebody is or what somebody's been through by what you're looking at in front of you because they've all started out. Like each and every one of us came out of our mother's womb, and it's been this, this mind-bogglingly deep experience, moment to moment through our life to get to this place where we are here and now. I mean, I, I would completely agree. My life got really simple when I had a daughter, you know, when you have a family, when you have people to, to take care of, to protect and provide for, it's like your life gets really simple. You start to see what's the bullshit really quick, you know? Um, and you broaden my horizon today, bro. We don't all need a rock bottom. Uh, yeah. And I think that now also, you know, to me, it's like then, okay, bro, what, what's it going to take for you? What's it going to take for you to take accountability? Absolute accountability. I love that. Absolute accountability. For me, it always kind of reveals itself as radical accountability because it's just, it's that the essence of it is my life is mine to create, man. I can't be looking around at somebody else because of what they did or said as a hindrance to my well-being or to my expansion. Like, it's all on me, dude. Whatever I want, it's all on me. And if I'm not taking steps towards creating that life, then that's my fault. That's completely my fault. You know, I want to be, like, I hear people say to me, like, I want to be fit and strong. Okay. Easy, dude. <laughs> Don't hit snooze. Get to the fucking gym. Eat good food. Eat a lot of protein. Eat clean. Eat real food. You'll see results pretty quickly, but you got to be disciplined and you got to be consistent about it. 
it's not going to happen overnight. You don't go to the gym one time for 30 minutes, hit the treadmill and do some, you know, five pound dumbbell curls and like you're going to be fit and strong. It just doesn't happen that way. I've been lifting weights since I was fucking 12 years old. You know what I mean? Like I hear people say to me all the time, dudes on steroids, you're on gear, man. This guy's talking about being strong and fit. He's on gear, which I think is hilarious. I'm like, dude, this is what happens when you fucking spend your life attending to your body. It didn't always look like this. I was a fucking chubby kid. My dad got me a weight set, started fucking lifting weights, started going to yoga classes. Like my life became about my body, my health, my physical well-being. I want to be strong. I want to be resilient, dude. Come into contact with a lot of stress in life. One of the best ways to stay resilient, be fit, be physically fit. But that takes work. Doesn't happen like playing fucking with the Oculus on, you know? Like, have you seen this, dude? It's insane. Like, we're trying to scapegoat. We're trying to bypass just the truth by any means necessary. Like, oh, I want to get a workout in. Yeah, I'll do my, my Oculus VR trainer. It's like, bro, get the fuck in the gym. Go outside. Go hit a pull-up bar. You know? Go hit a mountainside. Hike up and down it for two hours. You know? It's like, whatever you want, you can do it. But it's going to take discipline and it's going to take consistency. And nobody's going to give it to you but you, bro. You know? You want to play in the NFL? Do it. Do that. Like when I was... The idea of playing the NFL got planted in my mind when I was like eight years old. My mom wouldn't let me play until I got to high school. I was 13 years old, freshman in high school, stepped on the football field. And from that moment, dude, it was like everything I did was in alignment with achieving this dream. It's like how I lived, how I carried myself, how I walked, how I talked, how I ate, how I trained, everything, dude. I just believed it. I became that. I became that. And it happened. Blood, sweat, tears, pain, joy, all of it, all in there. It was fucking glorious. It was incredible. It was hard as fuck. But I did it, dude. And I did it just one day at a time. You know, it's like one day at a time, dude. You'll build your empire. You'll build your kingdom. You'll, you'll be the person, anything you want to be. But it takes commitment. It takes discipline. Consistency, focus. You've got your intention. What's your intention? And then you apply your attention to that. What are you giving attention to in your life? That's a big thing. We've got a lot of shit to distract us, man. A lot of stuff can divert your attention over here and over there and the pizza and the stuff and the video games and the, you know, the Instagram models and the thing and the, the. you know, there's a lot of things that just like, it's like leaking attention. It's like, bring it fucking right back here, man. Right back to center. Lock in, get laser focused. You could achieve more in one year than you possibly could have ever imagined. You know, you know that. Anyway, we're just here to remind people what they've forgotten. But I also believe in in leading by example. Uh huh. Who you surround yourself w yeah. with, who you listen to. Yeah. And the beauty is that these days, like, you don't need to surround yourself became like it can also be like who you like what kind of content you eat mm -hmm. online kind of yeah that's part of your be, diet that's part of your diet and your mindset and and before you know it you you listen to the right people it can change your life it really i listen to that's another thing that really so i was living a very toxic self-centered narcissistic Uh, life where it's all about how much money and how much following I have, mm. I would say, mm -hmm. for many years, many, uh -huh. many years. Yeah. But when I became a dad, I did not only become a dad, I also had so much time on my hand that I started listening to podcasts because mm. I would make the, prepare the bottles or I would just like 
yeah, uh -huh. be with him in the chair or have him in the sack. There's nothing I can do. Yeah. I cannot work out. I cannot really meet somebody. So I have all this time on my hand and I decided I'm going to educate myself. I started listening to Joe Rogan yeah. and David Goggins, the best. Andrew Tate. Yeah. Before I knew it, I became a warrior. Uh -huh. You know, like I, I started taking accountability. I had people that told like, you get this deep information and before you know it, you more and more resonate with it and you don't need rock bottom. You can really, you can change your life one day to another. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, great. and that great. really having, I feel like when I was a teenager, I had people, the people that I looked up to, there was like a gap between like people were looking up to like Arnold Schwarzenegger and like really strong man figures mm. to a point where there were no more figures like that. And now we're back to having like heroes again, uh -huh. like David Goggins. Yeah. Where you can be like, I want to be uh -huh. that motherfucker, you know? Yeah. Dude. But there was a gap where it was just talk like people, like a strong masculine figure was looked down upon. Mm. And it was like, this is bad. And, and young men should not have that anymore. I never, I mean, I never bought into that. Yeah. I know society like wanted yeah, to but, push that. Yeah. I mean, I grew up, Arnold was one of my heroes. Yes. Dude. Predator, yeah. Terminator 2. Fuck, what? Pumping Iron. You seen Pumping Iron? <laughs> of course. I mean, dude, it's like, you watch that as a, as a teenager and you're like, yeah, bro, that's what it's fucking about right there. You know what I mean? And I don't, when, when all of this stuff, I don't know, let, for me that, that whole thing was interesting because I first started hearing about that on Joe Rogan's podcast. Like you talk about, you know, just like all these people on the internet who seem to not like, I don't ever see these people in my real life. You know, the people who are like toxic masculinity oh, yeah, yeah. cut your balls off uh, you know like i never i never come into contact with these people they seem to be phantoms that live bots. on the inter internet yeah or bots or something but for me it was always man like and another interesting thing i've been thinking about here just kind of a side note it's just a, an interesting idea to me in this day and age like i've had very deep and you know i grew up and sort of there was a very counterculture edge to my upbringing where we'd go and get like tarot readings and see psychics and meet with really interesting healers and and I've had a handful of healers and psychics and readings where they tell me that I have this very feminine spirit in this hyper-masculine body, you know? And thinking about that in, in terms of today's day and age and like the societal, this, the societal ideology that's emerged, you know, with this, I agree that I have this feminine spirit, whatever that means. Nowhere in me have I ever felt uncomfortable being a fucking man, you know? Like, I feel like I love my body. I love being a large alpha male. Like, I love it, you know? Never once have I thought I'm in the wrong body or maybe I'm a woman. Maybe I'm a woman. No, I've never thought that ever. And I've always, I've always looked up to strong men. Lucky, I was lucky, you know, my father was always around and he's a, he's a fucking very upright man. He's an artist, former D1 basketball player who worked really hard to put food on the table and do what's right. And, um, aside from that, had some great football coaches, like good men just like good men, just solid men. You know, I was blessed to be surrounded by solid men. And then ha always looked up to Arnold and great athletes and, you know, Michael Jordan and fucking, you know, like Kobe and Shaq and Troy Aikman and fuck, you know, like these incredible athletes, like hyper-masculine 
athletic warrior archetypes. And then he, when I was in college, really got into Beowulf and Sir Gowan and the Green Knight, like ancient mythology about men, about being a warrior. And that's always resonated really deeply with me, man. And I've never, I, I, have, I have never really understood or come into contact with the people that claim to want to tear that down. There's a really important book. Maybe you've read it called Iron John by Robert Bly. It's the ultimate book on manhood and masculinity. And he does a great job in that book of, of articulating like how we got here to this place of like the toxic masculinity or like masculinity is bad. And, you know, he takes you through the decades, like the fifties and the sixties and the rise of feminism and the feminist movement. And I know Troy, Troy speaks on that in a really interesting way. Cause his, he watched his mom go through that, but the feminist movement, it's like, I'm all for empowered women, dude. Like I'm all for it. Like do whatever you want to do. Be the person you feel you're destined to be. And it's a really great and important thing to be a mom, to be a mother, to like raise a family, to care for children, to be the anchor of a household. Like that's a fucking dying art. Like that's perhaps one of the most important roles in the history of humanity. You know, and then also what could be more important than raising the children like or, the, and giving life, what yeah, could be giving more life. Hey, yeah. A thousand. I mean, dude, what could yes. be more purposeful than putting life in this, in this, in this world and, and becoming a mother? There is no more purpose and, you know, no dude, career, no job, no money, no following can fill that. The thing, the funny thing is, bro, we, you say that we say that. And it seems like, like there's this air that that's some totally, uh, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, that's a totally antagonistic or revolutionary thing to say in this day and age. Or my brother and I have this, this on my, on the ebb and flow pod that I do, my brother and I talk all the time and my brother's like, it seems almost crazy to say it's good to be a man. Like this, that he's like, I want to post on Instagram. Like it's okay. Or it's good to be a man. Like you feel like that's going to get some hate or something. And that's insane. And the thing is though, dude, when you get clear, when you start getting really anchored into what's real and your values are super, pristine, like your values, man. Like what are our values? Like what's important to you morally, like deep down underneath all the stuff, of like how much money you want to make or what job you want to, or what the fuck you want people to think you are all that stuff, throw it all out the window. And part of this is when you have kids, the values get really clear. You know, I want peace and love and stability and health and well-being for my family and everything I do, it's going to move me towards providing that for everyone who comes into my sphere. But when you don't have those values, you're subject. You become a slave to all of these societal ideologies that are false, that are illusions. They're built on nothing. It's built on propaganda to make us weak. Because you have to think... You know, when you say something like that, like they want us weak, they want us soft, you go, man, that's crazy. Somebody really wants that. But when you look at what's coming through the screens or what's on the billboards or what's being said in the mainstream, you know, uh, sound wave, it's like, what could the, the possible reason for saying that be other than to make us weak and soft and scared? and a slave to the system like what outside of that and you only that only gets revealed to you it's like the thing of you know telling your family or your loved ones or your friend like hey dude you should probably spend a little less time on the screen and they're like nah man you're wild you're crazy bro it's fine 
you know, until you've gotten really clear on the inside about what's important to you and what's real and what's true, you're subject to all of this stuff, all of this stuff, because you're just like this, you're like this reed in the wind. You're just getting blown whichever way the wind goes, you know, and you're going to say whatever the thing is, you're going to parrot the information, whatever's coming through from the experts, you're just going to parrot that thing. And you're not even going to think about whether or not that makes sense to you in the realm of your life experience, which is all that really matters. You know, it's like, what have you experienced in your life? Every single thing you've experienced in your life, that information is downloaded in your cells. Like you, every feeling that you feel is an emanation of all the experiences you've ever had in your life. The pain, the joy, the good, the bad, the suffering, the ecstasy. It's all here. So those feelings that emerge, that's coming from some very deep intelligence inside of you that's based on real factual things that you've experienced that have occurred in the, in the timeline of your life, right? So constantly society wants to tell you, no, man, that's wrong. It's wrong, bro. It's fine. It's fine. Eat like shit. Watch TV. Jack off. Don't have kids. Be soft and weak. It's good, bro. Obese people are healthy. They're beautiful. They're, <laughs> it's fine. They're just as healthy as uh, a person who exercises every day. It just looks different. It's like, no, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> goes against everything that you feel is true in your body. When you feel that, this has greater intelligence than anything out here. Because you've been, th this thing has been through it. Whatever your mind thinks, throw the mind out of it. Because the mind, until the mind is sharpened and cleared, the mind is just this chaotic circus of noise. Like the body is hyper intelligent. It's been through a lot. And to discern anything, to discern the truth and, and what's real and what's not an illusion, the only thing you can do is, is get really healthy. You know, it's like, that's, that's square one, you know, get your food right, get your body right, get the physical vehicle get it fucking tuned in and sharpened. That's ba That's the base layer right there, you know? Because from there, you can't have a clear mind if your body's in chaos. You just can't. So that's square one. I mean, and a lot of people don't have that, you know? You're in chemical chaos because you don't exercise, you don't get enough sunlight, and then you're eating processed foods, which are just basically a coagulation of chemicals. So you're just in chaos in your body. How could your mind be clear? You, can, you can't have a clear thought in your head if your body's not clean and clear and healthy and bright. It's just impossible. And then I think it's, uh, it's talking to people. Mm. When I yeah. look at when I did my shift, because I never hit rock bottom. Um, I had a, my landlord was super awake. Mm. Now walk, awake, very awake. And I pushed back on it. He tried to help me. He told me what to do. He told me, don't, don't get the booster. Don't do this, mm. do that, mm. this and that. And he told me history stuff blew my mind. And mm. I will go back in my apartment upstairs and... I don't know when you're like you said when you're like uh, chemically droids is chemically castrated uh -huh. and so you're so inflamed your whole system is yeah. so inflamed that you it 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 also it pushes your whole life view it destroys it and that is so scary that you just rather live a lie yes. than open your eyes yeah. so I pushed it away and I did that mm. I was like Well, once you, once you watch what you eat, you end up like want to live at a farm. You can't eat anything, right? You can't eat on a restaurant. You can't buy things in a supermarket. Uh -huh. It seems like you can't even drink the water. I know, man. Everything's in plastic. And like the more you get into it, the more 
it drives you crazy. You yeah. you lose any sense where you're like, where people are like, oh my God, like you don't know what to believe anymore. And that's scary to most people. I think once you cannot trust anyone and you've did everything wrong in your life, right? It yeah. seems like, it seems like yeah. you, you lose yourself and you lose your life. And, and that's why I push back on it. But then the more people you meet, it's like the same strategy as they do. Like the more you hear about it and the more you look into it, the easier you get eased into these things. And then you start with a little bit of this and uh -huh. you go a little bit to the gym and you feel a little bit better. Yeah. You're like a little fresher yeah. in your brain. And then you get some organs and you feel not bloated anymore. And, and your, your gut gets really good. And like, before you know it, you, you, you put your, your feet in, in the ground and, and, and before you know it, you, you, you get eased into it. Yeah. The same way you get eased into the fast food and, and the Netflix and, and all that. So I think I like that too. with meeting a lot of these people, suddenly, suddenly my, me and my wife are just like, you know, you like fire each other up. You're uh -huh. like, hey, I, I like this. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, I, I yeah. do like that too. And, and then you like, one thing too leads to another and, you, and you're like on a journey of being the healthiest you. Yeah, yeah. And other people can really, like meeting people like Troy, or just listening to yeah. people like him can yeah. really inflame that inside of you. I agree. I agree. You don't need to. I think we're at this point, we're all at rock bottom uh -huh. during this pandemic, right? So yeah. I think at this point. If you didn't hit rock bottom during the pandemic, I mean, you were either already out of it or you were asleep through yeah. the whole thing. Well, you don't know that you're at rock bottom. Yeah. But once you're alone in your home, on your screen, like you said, like once you're in that position where you watch other people live their life or pretend their life, selectively chosen moments that are completely fake and like put together. Uh -huh. Like I've, I've done so many posts online and it is so illustrated. Um, it's so selective, mm. right? Mm -hmm. These moments. Yeah. They're never really how they are. Uh, it's very biased. Uh -huh. So you got to realize that this ain't it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've been doing podcasts in seven years. Pretty much. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That would, that's life changing, no? Oh yeah, dude. Totally transformative. Life-changing, transformative. It's just, um, I think to your point, it's a, it's a great way. The most transformative experience is to be in relationship with anything we're con we're in relationship with everything life is all relationships and there's a really powerful thing that happens when you're actively engaging with people or with a community and you become aware of of the thoughts that you're thinking of the words that you're speaking, the actions that you're taking, and you see, like, how does this stuff, what's the impact that that I have on my environment, you know? And I've always been hypersensitive, just, just very sensitive in, I think it's a superpower, you know? We, it's funny when I say that, part of me is like, oh, don't say that up. Don't you know, everybody will think you're a fucking pussy, man. Don't say you're sensitive, but I'm, I'm super sensitive. And what I mean by that is I'm just, I feel deeply there's the stimuli when the stimuli comes in the words or the actions or the things that I come into contact with or that I experience, I'm hypersensitive to how it makes me feel. Like, what is the feeling? What's the sensation that emerges when you come into contact with the stimuli? And, you know, when, when you're doing a podcast, 
And for me, like you, I've always wanted to be a positive influence. Like every football team I was ever on, like I was the guy. I lifted people up. I, I would put the team on my back and like, let's fucking go, man. You got this. You're great. You're the best. You're going to kick ass right here. Which I think is another important thing of that idea of talking to people. Talk to people. Spend time around people who lift you up, dude who tell you that you're doing a good job or that can show you the way or that can say, Hey man, that thing you did, I don't think that was right. That was fucked up or this needs a little adjusting or people who, when they give you feedback or criticism, it's constructive. It's building you up. Like be around people who fucking build you up, who tell you, who affirm to you that you got it. You can do it. You're the fucking goat, bro. You are. So spend time around those people. But when, you know, you're doing a podcast and for me, it's there, it's multifaceted, the experience that I've had, you know, because early on, I've always felt comfortable on the mic. I've always felt comfortable sharing my story, my experience. Some, sometimes, to detrimental ends, you know, like revealing too much or, and now I've gotten to a point where it's like, what's revealing too much, you know, because the things that I'm experiencing in the dark night of my soul is something that's total medicine for somebody who's going through the same thing, you know, so that they can see, Hey man, you can make it out of this. You can get back to the light, you know? But at first, you know, there was this thing or this thing emerged, this voice, this ego trip of like, hey, you got to say the right thing here, man. You got to say the thing that's going to show everybody how smart you are, how much you know, how good you are, you know. And it became this process of just putting that to bed, just like, eh, okay, man, thank you. And just showing up on the mic and being present, being totally present, you know, and for me, that's been the key. And that's been the most transformative piece of all this is this exercise in getting present. Because anytime I hopped on the mic and I had some preconceived thing I wanted to talk about, but it wasn't alive in the moment and I share it anyway, when I listen back, I'm like, that sounds like shit, bro. It's like you're trying. You're trying too hard. It doesn't sound authentic. It doesn't sound real. And you you learn that really quickly when it's like watching film. Like when I played football, we'd film practices, we'd film games, and then we'd watch it in meetings. We'd watch ourselves on tape. And you got to see the, the gap between what you think is happening and what's actually happening. That's a really powerful, interesting experience that gives you grand insight into the reality of things. And doing a podcast or creating content, it's the same thing. Your life is on film. It's on film. So we get to see. And when you play it back, what's actually happening? What's coming across here? You think it looks like something, but actually it looks like something totally different or it comes across a certain way or the way you are holding yourself gives off this energy that is either good or bad or makes you look this way or that way or whatever it might be. So for me, it's been this incredibly transformative experience of watching film of myself. It's like, how am I? How real am I is really the only, that's the only measurement of success or good that I put to it, when I listen back to a podcast, I know immediately, I'm like, yeah, you're full of shit there, bro. Or usually in the last few years, every podcast I've done, I've been like proud of myself there. So I was just, I was just in my feet. It was just real to the moment. It was just exactly where I was. I wasn't trying to be anything other than this here and now. Um, and that's been a gift. That's been a gift in my life. I, mean, I think a lot of people imagine if, imagine if there was a camera, there was an eye in the sky following everybody around. Maybe there is, hopefully not. <laughs> There's cameras everywhere. 
But imagine if you, at the end of every day, you watched film of your life. What would you think, dude? My dad used to tell me this thing. He would tell me this thing when I was playing football. He would say, somebody's always watching, man. Somebody's always watching. I really took that to heart, you know? And it's true. Whether you know it or not, somebody's always watching. And not only that, you are always watching. You're always here, man. You always know. You know at the end of the day if you did it, if it was good, if it's a day to be proud of or it's a day to feel ashamed of. Like, you know that thing, man. Maybe you snapped back. Maybe you reacted in a, in a way that started a fight or burned a bridge or you said that thing because you needed to be right or you needed to get revenge or whatever it is. And then you look back and you're like, man, was that worth it? It's like that moment with the devil, dude, you know, was that worth it? Usually not in the grand scheme. Never. It's never worth it. You know, it's and never you have, worth it. How do you always know? <laughs> right? It's interesting. It's like almost like we have this deep understanding and it's always within where you, I can really tell with like workouts where mm. you know that yeah. moment I gave it my all. And like, how many moments do you have where you know that day I was, I gave it my all, you know, uh, when back to my first uh, jujitsu class, I gave it my all and I knew that and I didn't win a single one, oh. single fight. Mm -hmm. I tapped every time, but I still gave it my all. And not, not only that, I put myself in the most uncomfortable position I can possibly imagine, mm. you know? And That's most, something to be proud of. Yeah. Totally. And that and then you win no matter what. Yeah. You're you're a true because you I had so much joy because I know I did it that the outcome doesn't matter at all to me. Uh -huh. So there was just so much joy that I was like, wow, I can actually do that. Uh -huh. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's it, dude. That's There's it. beauty oh, yeah, in surprising yourself and yeah. trusting yourself, but mostly surrendering because i was like i just surrendered to the moment and i was like we'll just find out i have no idea yeah but also being disciplined for years and years and years and building a lot of strength up led up to that moment uh -huh. because i always hesitated in the one-on-one -on -one, a man versus a man mm. i'll never forget the regret when you make the wrong decision, like you just said. Yeah. I They asked me after I did one season of football, I did mm -hmm. one exchange here when I was 17, uh -huh. had a, the best time. And they asked, because everybody went to play rugby in, in the winter. Uh. And they asked me and I said, no. Uh. And I still regret that to that day because yeah. I was just a coward. And I was like, I didn't let my, I didn't give myself a chance, uh. you know? Uh huh. And that there's beauty in, you know, in your heart, if you did the right thing yeah. or not, yeah. if you are true to yourself, if you are, it's not about like what podcast has the most clicks or the best viral moment or no, it's when you know you were true in that you were true to yourself and you said what you wanted to say. And, you know, that's it, bro. That's it. That's the only marker I, I have for success. Yeah. You know, uh, I, and that that's interesting to me to think about that. I've thought about that a couple of times over the last couple of days, actually. Like, what is the measurement of success? Because it's not about the money anymore. It's not about the car or whatever that stuff is, the material stuff. None of that matters. And even no recognition matters. Like, I don't even care if anybody knows who I am, knows my name, any of that. The only measurement of success that matters to me is like, Did I do it the best I could? Did I give it everything I had? Was I true to myself? Was I true to my heart? If I did that, man, I sleep well at night, dude. Every night I sleep fucking well. I've met a lot of people who don't sleep well at night. It's because you're at night when you start to relax, all of that stuff starts to emerge. All the regret, all the shame, all the guilt, all the what I should have, I didn't do, all that stuff starts to come into the forefront of your mind. It makes it hard to sleep. 
It's a nice thing to sleep well. And all you got to do is just show up. Just show up. Do the best you can. I will say, like you said, man, that takes some preparation, though. That takes, like, every day not hitting snooze, you know? I love that we've stumbled on this. Don't hit snooze, bro. You know, you've not, you didn't hit snooze. You got your workout in. You ate really well. You, you loved on your people. You were a good dad. You spent quality time. You worked hard. You did some meaningful, purposeful work. And at the end of the day, you can look back and go, yeah, did that one good. Got that one done. Nice. Great job, bro. Excellent job. And you build momentum, you know? Something I, one of the first Joe Rogan podcasts I ever listened to, he was talking about that. He was just talking about momentum. And when you do that, when you, when you live with discipline and you work hard and you give it your best shot every day, you build this momentum, you know, and then one day you're just unstoppable, man. Like, yeah, the devil's going to come, like you said. Devil comes every day to whisper in your ear and say, hey, bro, just take it off today. But you've become this fucking unstoppable freight train that's got the entire universe moving it forward, you know? It's like it becomes harder and harder to stop. Like it's, it's or should I, I should say, it just becomes easier and easier to push through that difficulty, that push past the devil, push past the discomfort, because you've got all this energy built up behind you, this momentum that's just carrying you forward in a positive direction. Um, I think it's really, it's, to me, I, I don't know what else we're doing here, man, you know, in life. Like you said, what a weird thing that you always know, you know, in your heart, man, that if you did it right, or if you, you know, you took the easy way out or you did the thing, you know, like you always know. Why do you try to escape that knowing? You know, we're trying to constantly like find the way. You're like a little kid trying to get into the mom's cookie jar, you know, without her knowing. It's like, dude, you're never going to do that. You can never do that. You will always know whether or not you gave it your all. You did the best you could. You tried to take the easy way out, you're always going to know, man. So you might as well just do it well. Give yourself the chance. Give yourself the opportunity. You just do it the best you can to live a life that's clean. It's like, then your slate's clean. Then you're not looking at your life like you've got this whole laundry list of amends to make and to yourself first, you know? Like, you got you to... Gotta, get to the point where you can even just forgive yourself for having made all those poor decisions because you're under this mountain of stress that you've built up on top of yourself about not having done it good enough or ah, I took the easy way out. I quit ah, and quitting. Fuck dude. There's a lot of regret, a lot of shame in that for people. You know, and then you, you've done it for so long, you get to a point where it's like almost it's impossible. You'd rather live the lie, you know, like you said. And the interesting thing is the miracle is it's just one moment away. Your salvation is just one moment away. It's one choice away, you know, one meal away. It's like you've been eating like shit your entire life. It's just the next meal is the meal that sends you on the trajectory of good health and wealth and well-being, you know? Just one meal, the next meal, man. All right. Yeah, you could start right now. And that's all it is. Like, give yourself that. We really like to live in the, in the stress. We, li we like to live in that. You know, it's easier to live in the lie. I don't know if we like it. It's just easier. You know? It's okay. <laughs> anyway brother dang we've been rolling for two hours of course man but what about last but not least i always think about this what if not everybody or well, i know that not everybody can be an alpha yeah not everybody can wake up mm. i don't know if it works like that 
Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't think it ever worked like that. I think like even like when you look at the apes or small villages, there was always a, a certain amount of individuals that will go hunt. Mm. And there's something uh-huh. for everyone. Yes. But for the people in power, there's responsibility and there needs to be, you know, you need to look out for the weak and you sometimes need to make the right decision for the the individual that might not look into things or not mm. worry about their health. So maybe it is upon us to, you know, like, I feel like always like you can always like when you meet another awake person or another alpha that really fires each other up. Uh And sometimes, like you said, like no matter how much you scream at a cattle, it will not awaken. Yeah. So I wonder if... uh, There's a place for the cattle? Well, it's just more complex and it it, it, the awakening has to work one person at a time. Yeah. So there's beauty in making a podcast and 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 somebody that is all like why would you listen to this right there's already some sort of spark where you are right. hungry for you you know there's more out there Yeah right Yeah So you're all this is not getting like fed into your feed Right purposely uh-huh. you you were looking for this moment you, you were looking it, for man. the truth you wanted the truth Mhm you're looking for it Yeah So there is no way you've been listening for two hours if there is not a single little bit inside of you that barks and that wants more. There's a lion inside the sheep uh-huh. yeah. that is feeding, that we're feeding with this information, that uh-huh. is feeding off this information and that wants more. And there, I think with that, there might be some sort of shift in, in power that benefits the asleep. Because it, it seems like at this point, the the people in charge and the people in power, there is a lot of like, where it's very egoistic and they just think about their own profit. Uh-huh. I don't always believe that everybody in charge is evil, uh-huh. but it seems like the system is built to, it's more about profit than, than benefiting the individual or the weak. Yeah, yeah, that's but for sure. But I think sure. this fight has always occurred and uh-huh. no matter if it was a king yeah going over the people yeah there's always a a man is always at war if it's in your mind or if it's physically uh-huh and that seems to be true yeah, yeah that gives you purpose and uh-huh. that gives you there's beauty in that yeah. in the truth and speaking the truth yeah feels good to speak the truth though yeah it does yeah it does and your soul and it's, feels it's, clean yeah and it's uh it's draining to lie and pretend. So draining. <laughs> yeah, you become lifeless. Yeah. You you literally become lifeless when you lie and pretend and spend your whole life in that. It's just that's not there's no energy in that. And I, and I think every individual can you can listen inside and be like I live a great life or this ain't it. Uh-huh. And if this ain't it then you're on the journey of finding out which is the best. Uh huh. That's absolutely dude. Finding out what it is. And where's the fun in? Imagine you're. That's the when you're born into the billionaire family. When you're born, and you get healthy food, you get like a great fit dad <laughs> that just educates you on how to be rich and how to make money and how to live a good life. Uh-huh. Where, where's the fun in that? Uh, yeah. Right, there's no struggle. Not much of an adventure. That's there's not much of a. Imagine you get like, uh, uh, like you get the best meat and the best eggs, and you just like there's no electricity, and you just sleep in a tent, and you live this beautiful life, and you meet the love of your life right away. She's like just standing there and asking you to marry her. Like there's no, where where's your fight? Uh huh. Where's the journey? Oh yeah, we all we've all got that. <laughs> we've all got one. It's like. Like, have you ever achieved anything easy and were proud of it? Or is everything that was very hard and difficult where you're like, yeah, that's the key. Of? That's the key, man. If having yeah. children and having a family was easy or, you know, yeah, there's no, uh, there's no learning and no developing 
without the struggle. Uh huh. Yeah. So anything life puts upon you, you should be thankful for. Oh yeah, I agree, man. Absolutely. Awesome, bro. Love that. Man, I had no idea. We would go there. We went deep, bro. Yeah, where you were gonna go, and that's so cool too. No? Yeah. Like, love that. And like, man, every time I do a podcast, I'm like, it blows my brains out. I'm like, almost like, this one is it. Uh -huh. And I meet the next person, and I'm like, this one, <laughs> man, it was so crazy, man. This one is it. And you, you, you realize everybody lives a completely different life and uh -huh. have a different view, and somehow we're all the same, but somehow we're also all different. Mm -hmm. And there's like, you can learn from anyone, but also we're all one. Yeah. Yeah. We all make the same mistakes and we can all learn from each other. And Absolutely, dude. Yeah. I appreciate this, man. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you, man. Appreciate you, bro. All right. That's a wrap. That's a wrap, man. <laughs>